So uh, we're going to take a look at the self-destructing message and the cryptography and just show you some of this. So um, here's the number that you use only once, and it's an array of length 24 of bytes. How would you say that? Uh, it's a 24-byte array. 24-byte array. Slice, there you go. Array. Yeah, 24-byte array. And, uh, and so you could print that out, and then you could take that array and read full. Uh, ask for a reader and a slice. And so right here, this is taking the array and it's slicing it and it's giving me all the elements, right? And so that's creating a slice. And uh, read full will, read full takes a, a reader and the slice. And then this allows, allows the slice to be populated. And when the slice gets populated, the underlying array is populated because slices are built on top of arrays. Right? And then if we go back and we print the array, we'll see that that's populated. And I have a question about this line, so if anybody has any insights into it in a second, I'd love to hear them. All right, so let's run that. I've got the largest terminal window. Easy. Yeah, that takes you somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah, it prints it. It's just firing up. So there's uh, the first time it prints, right? So this is uh, the array of, how did you say that again? Array of bytes, 24, 24 byte array. 24 byte array, is that it? Yep. 24 byte array. 24 byte array all set to the zero value. Uh, var sets things to the zero value. And then here we do that, and then we print it again, and we've got all these random numbers in here. And since it's a byte, the numbers are 0 to 255. We got a 252 twice. So my question is, is it almost seems like if, uh, you know, read full, it should be almost like, I, I think about this almost like I'm writing to this slice, right? Yeah. So read full seemed kind of weird to me, that, and I'm passing in a reader. It's almost like, no, I want to write full, pass in a writer, and write to this. So what, what are your thoughts on it's, that? It's reading from the reader, which may be from across a network stream or a file or whatever. In this case, we're, we're asking for the OS's secure random number generator. Ah. Um, so it's reading from that, from that whatever reader that is. So it's reading, reading it's from, out, uh, it's putting into on Unix-like systems, reader reads from dev ur random, u random. And read full as opposed to say read full is the So. So read full basically means you, you're passing in the slice. You're going to read that many bytes, and it'll read wait until up. until it'll and it will okay, wait until that's, that's full. Okay. All right. So uh, read full means read from this and read until this is full. Yeah. Doesn't that seem like it should almost be right? <laughs> no, that makes sense to you. It makes more sense now that you guys explained it. Explain makes, it, makes, it would make more sense to me, I think, if they reverse where their arguments were, because usually in programming, everything goes right to left in the, the data flows. But yeah, destination source. Yeah. Yeah. That's how co IO copy works. Exactly. But but it's the other way around this way, so that that's what hits me the most. Maybe their idea was read from into. Yeah, but it's just, it's just different from everywhere, from yeah. all the other functions in the. Yeah, I agree. IO package. All right, so that's how the the notes deal works, and then here's the encrypt part, and uh, so this is uh, not yet encrypted. I called it decrypted, and then I get the notes, and then uh, instead of read full, I did read at least, and uh, the reason I changed read full on the first one was because of this. There's this cool place where people will tell you what you're doing wrong. Golang uh, form bridge. There we go. Form at Golang bridge. And I uh, posted up here. I wonder if I could see like my post somehow. Go and go encrypting and notes. Two replies. And uh, so I posted something about that. I was just curious. And he said, uh, this could be IO read full, and you should check the error return, unless you suddenly be encrypting all your stuff with zero notes. So I thought, oh, that's cool. Because originally at boot camp, we did it with read at least. 
And so that wasn't my question up here. I forget what I was asking. Uh, uh, oh, I guess I was just saying, hey, check this out. I think this is cool. And then he was like, yeah, it is cool, but you should re use read full. But so here's how we did it. Boot camp was read at least. And same thing, reader, and then the notes, and how much, right? So we're reading at least that much. So I think read full makes a lot more sense there. All right, so we get the, we get the notes. And then we're also getting a password. And it's a, a array of 32 bytes. Did I say that right? 32 byte array. 32 byte array, dang it. I don't know why I have a mental block against that. 32 byte array. And then uh, read at least, uh, ran reader, and then we password to fill it up. And then we use uh, something called secret box and seal. So we're basically like secret box is, uh, and I think we talked about this. Yeah, it's the NACL. So. Yeah, we talked about this last week and the X, the X packages and what the X packages are in Golang. Do you guys remember that? What are the... No? So the X packages in Golang, so if we go look at that, so uh, let's see, godoc.org, and then Google, and so here's X. Um, where do we find all of them? I think it's at golang.org. And uh, documents and package command release history JSON. I can't remember where I found that. This is the standard library. Go back up to the top. I thought I found some other packages. Other packages. Yeah. Oh, you have a row for them. I think they have. So the this is the other way we could do it right here. Going.org x crypto. So let's see if we drop that in, what happens. I'll bring us to that one, but can we go back to, oh, that took me to go doc. We just go straight to x. Ah, cool. And sub-repository packages. These packages are part of the Go project, but outside the main Go tree, they're developed under looser compatibility requirements than the Go core. Um, so uh, they're part of the Go project. So these are developed and I have like 94% certainty on this by uh, internally at Google, but and they're either like you know uh, working their way towards a standard library, or they're just things that Google developed which they wanted to use, and, uh, and like they the, put them like here. Like the blog one there. Yeah. The blog ones, you're not. That's for the Google blog for GoLang, but uh, so, say like the uh, Go Mobile, that's kind of that's just what they're working on still. Yeah. So here's the crypto one, and then inside crypto, like that's kind of weird, but uh, you could go to GoDoc and then look at that. You saw when I first put that in there, it took me straight to GoDoc, godoc.org, GoLang. And so here, uh, this is just basically a secret box, and it abstracts away uh, some of the technicalities of you know, cryptography. And, uh, and so basically here, you're just, you know, opening a secret box, sealing a secret box, and then opening a secret box, right? So that's what we're doing here is uh, we seal it. And to seal it, it takes in out, uh, pins an encrypted and authenticated copy of message to out. And out is a slice of byte. And, uh, and then also your message and your notes and your key. So the password, and then it returns a slice of byte. So here we seal, and we're not worrying about out. So out would basically be you can put an unencrypted something at the beginning of the message, or unchanged. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And uh, and then uh, and then we get our slice of byte, and we pass in that decrypted thing. That's our, our message. And then we do uh, our notes and password. And so once we get the secret box, it's encrypted. And we can print out the encrypted and just kind of looked at that. Here's making it hexadecimal and just sort of comparing notes to notes as a slice. Just looking at those two and decrypted. So you want to see it run? Yeah. I have to say it feels weird that there is no C ring. Oh, no need to seed it. You have the, uh, that there is if you're using just normal random function, which is all written in Go, but this particular one is asking the operating system. 
which yeah. can be more secure because they can read from it'll it'll like see the base of your mouse movements and yeah. such. I, I chased after after the documentation. It goes for the uh, kernel of the system call and the legs. Yep. So uh, here it is, decrypted, decrypted, right? Not encrypted yet. And then when we encrypt it, right? So that's this line here. It's encrypted. It's a slice of byte. And uh, would you say slice of byte or slice of bytes? I would say slice of bytes. I know because there's many bytes in like there, right? It's more technical type, that type it's, a, it's a slice of byte. And then I just got the length. What's the length of that? And then I converted it to string. And it's just wacky. A, a lot of those characters are unprintable by the terminal. So, oh, well, that's weird. And then, uh, and then I printed out the array, and then I also printed out the slice, just like comparing those two deals right there. And then, uh, and then turned it into hexadecimal right there. And there's a little bit of a separator right there. And what's the importance of a number that's used only once? Anybody know? Anybody know cryptography? The spying database engineers. Spying database engineers. I think it did a little bit, but anybody have any more insight into it? No. I make software. I don't make secret messages. And then here we have decrypt. Yeah, we we don't want someone who are, who has their own message to be able to see. Oh, that's their message. So with a, by adding in a something that's unique, random for each message to the uh, pass it to the encrypted key, you'll make sure that you're not going to get back the same encrypted data just by uh, using the same actual value. So we split up our string based upon that colon. We have uh, two parts. First part, which is our notes, and then second part, which is the encrypted message. And it's both in hex, so we decode the hex and we get a byte slice. And then uh, we take that byte slice, and uh, where do we use this byte slice? We get the length, so we need to make sure it's a valid notes. And then we copy that byte slice into our into notes. And uh, so we have our notes two, which we pass in down here when we do the open. And then we also have to have our secret password, which isn't stored in the message. And uh, we decode this one, get the byte slice, and then we pass that in here. So that's the you know, hexadecimal encoded message decoded into a slice of bytes. And, uh, and then we say, hey, open that, and we get the message back. So let's look at that. I love the, the if not okay. I like that, too. I think that's a nice notation. See there, you can see uh, before encryption, encrypted, after decrypting. So that's pretty cool. So presumably your encryption key would be uh, unique to your program somewhere, and then the nonce would be, the, but not shared with anyone else, and then the nonce would be stored with whatever thing you give back to the user or in the data store or something. Yeah.